Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. We've made it through another week. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got Drew and Wade and Philip and Laura, Masayu, Jack, Anika. Great to see all of you. Hope you're all excited for the weekend. And of course, National Donut Day. Today is National Donut Day, and we are going to be celebrating by creating some fun donut inspired designs from landing pages to posters to mobile apps. We'll see where things go. We may even design a donut itself, which is going to be kind of fun, right? All right. So we're going to be starting off by creating something like this. I did sneak it on Twitter. So go over there, follow me. And I know Jack is going to be very excited for National Donut Day because donuts, right? There you go. Donuts. Amazing. All right. Let's go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD and we're going to get going. So like I mentioned, we're going to start off with that design you just saw. And we could, you know, kind of modify that to be either a, a landing page or a poster or could even use that for some mobile. So let's go ahead and start off with a web landing page, 1920 by 1080. Ooh. And I'm going to make this nice and large. And let's get going. So in that example that you saw just a moment ago, I hopped back over to Twitter just for a second. A big part of it is these nice large donuts that kind of encompass the majority of this particular image, right? So if I hop over to Finder, I do have an image that I found on Adobe Stock that I think is going to work really nice for a landing page or a poster like this. And we're going to bring this into Adobe XD in just a second. But if you don't have images of your own, if you go to stock.adobe.com, there is a free section right here at the top and you can type out something like donuts. And for donuts, we have about a thousand results. And all of these images you can use in your projects completely for free, which is wonderful. And they're pretty decent images. Like they're very high quality and they should definitely get the job done. Of course, if you have stock credits of your own, then you can license some additional images. There are probably a lot more in the non-free library. Donuts, and there are 228,000 results for the premium light. We're not, not premium, I should, because there is a premium tier, um, but the, the paid tier, it's a lot of donuts. All right, let's go ahead and hop back over to Adobe XD. And what I want to do is bring this image directly into XD. Now, there are a few ways we can do this. We can either grab the image and just pop it in there. But because these images are incredibly large, uh, you know, I definitely have to resize it down quite a bit. Or another thing we can do is we can Draw out a rectangle and boop, pop it in there. That way it just, you know, masks it really nicely inside of that shape. And then when we need to, we can always resize it up. Now, I really like the color of the background of this particular image. It's got this nice light blue and it kind of gradually fades to a bit of a darker blue. But the problem, we're dealing with a landing page, which is 16 by 9. If I were to resize this, all the way out to fill the entire landing page, those donuts are very large and we lose some of them. And there's also another problem. If we want to put anything behind these donuts, we just can't. So what we can do instead is we can actually edit this photo in Photoshop to remove the background. So I can go ahead and right click on this and then edit in Photoshop. And in just a second, Photoshop is going to spring to action. There it goes. And the process of removing a background in Photoshop has gotten so much easier than it was when I started teaching Photoshop like 13 years ago. I'm going to unlock the background inside of the layers panel. And then when I do that inside of my properties, right over here, there's a remove background button. Look at that. It just removed the background. Amazing. It also gives you a layer map. So if it didn't do a perfect job or you want to bring things back or take things away, you can very easily edit the layer mask. And if you're not familiar with layer masks in Photoshop, anything that is painted white will remain visible. Anything that is black will not be visible, right? So if I hop over here, you might notice 
there's a little bit that it missed. Or I guess it took away a little bit too much. If I undo it and redo it, I'm not sure why, but it did, right? So I can just grab my brush and paint with white and just bring those back. Now I'm also noticing it did remove a few of the stars. Now I could go ahead and maybe, you know, paint the stars in using my lovely magic wand tool or quick selection tool or even the object selection tool, right? And if I enable the layer mask, I can use my alter option key and then my backspace key and that will bring those elements back. So if you just hold down your shift key, I know this this isn't a Photoshop masterclass, but you know maybe you'll pick up some tips. If you hold down your shift key and click on the layer mask, it'll hide it and show it, right? So you can see the before and after. So if you have some areas that you do want to make changes to, you can very easily just dive in and paint away, right? Just like that. I'm not going to spend too much time. Press X to switch the brushes, right? But for the most part, that looks pretty good. And we're really concerned about the donuts themselves and not really everything flying out from on it, right? Or, or around it. Now, now that we've gone ahead and edited this photo in Photoshop, what is the process of getting it back into Adobe XD? It seems like it would probably be, you know, a multi-step process. You have to save it to your computer and then you have to find it. You have to drag it back. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Command and control S. Save. That's it. It's amazing. It's one of the things I love about the Creative Cloud is everything is all kind of connected, right? So if I hop back over to Adobe XD, there it is. There's our edited photo, which is amazing. And it still remains linked. So if I want to go back here and make some additional changes, I would just have to do that. Make the changes, save it, and bam, there it is. All right. So we have our donuts. So now, this, now that we have those donuts in place, we can now go ahead and create our background. <coughs> so I'm going to select my artboard, and I'm going to do a background very similar to what we had in the original photo, where it looks like it's more or less a radial gradient with a lighter area in the front. So if I have my artboard selected over within the properties inspector, I'm going to open up my color picker, switch it over to a radial gradient, and then the middle color, We'll do something like that and the color on the edges something to that effect there right now i can definitely tweak this a little bit like about there maybe now when i created this radial gradient it kind of set it to the bounds of this artboard so it's kind of elongated and i probably don't necessarily want that in this case so i'm going to grab this handle right here at the bottom and just kind of bring it on out so we have a nice circle, right? And I might darken the edges just a touch. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. Now I'm thinking behind these donuts, now that we have a transparent background, I may want a nice large word that says donuts, right? So if I grab my text tool, shortcut key T, I'll type out the word donuts, all in caps. And if you need to, you can always hop into your properties inspector and adjust the text properties to make them all caps or uh, lowercase, title case, whatever it might be. And I'm going, oops, I'm going to go, at, bleh, my mouse wheel is all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and place it in the center of this document, make it nice and large. But, you know, it's right now set to Helvetica and it's set to a gray color. Not the greatest, right? Gray tis, not, never. Um, so I'm going to start by setting the color to white which is going to look really nice against that blue background when we do move it back there. And then I'm thinking we might want a really nice, heavy typeface. And I do have a few in mind that we might want. On a more stylistic side, something like belly display could be kind of interesting. It's maybe a little bit too stylistic. But I'm thinking something like Cubano is a really interesting typeface. And Jonathan Pimento from our design team and product management team showed me this typeface, I think two Adobe Maxes ago, he created a nice sample file and it uses a typeface, a really nice typeface and also has a has a regular version, which is kind of more rounded around the edges and a sharp version. So if you don't want those rounded edges, which is kind of fun, right? And Fergie is saying, imagine if you use the image to represent the O in donuts and that's exactly where we're going. So I'm gonna remind you, Fergie probably didn't see this, but here's the image that we're kind of going for. This one right here. 
So we're going to be using one of the donuts as an O. Oh, mm, kind of fun, right? All right, so we have our word nice and large, and of course we want it behind our donuts. So we can either use our shortcut command and control left square bracket key, or we can just drag it behind just like that, right? Looking pretty good. Now, if you don't have typefaces that may work for this particular type of design, if you hop over to Adobe Fonts, one thing I love doing when I'm when I have a little bit of free time is just browsing fonts because there's always new ones being added. And if I hop over to the browse all fonts section over to the left, you can really nail down exactly what typeface you're looking for, right? So if you wanted something, let's say something clean, for example, and then I want <coughs> want to make sure that I have a nice heavy weight. And I apologize for the, the coughing, which you're definitely going to hear. I'm still recovering from COVID. I don't, I'm not positive anymore, but um, I've got that lingering cough that just won't go away. So I have our clean and I have the weight set to nice and heavy. And I can also type out donuts here at the top. I can make this larger or smaller. So I can really see and nail down exactly what kind of typeface I'm looking for. And, you know, maybe we want something a little bit more luxurious. So we can do that and switch over. Some of them are pretty interesting. They may not work for this particular design, but they're quite interesting. Geometric, friendly, rounded possibly, or maybe friendly, let's see. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. Our genie. Ooh, look at ice cream. I like that typeface. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sync this typeface. I don't think we're gonna use it, but I'm gonna sync it. We have an ice cream slant and an ice cream standard. That's kind of fancy. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to sync it. It's going to come on through. We won't see the note. Usually you would see the notification here at the top, but I have do not disturb on. So it, you won't see it, but eventually it'll come through. Usually it's pretty quick. Oh, there. That, that was it. All right. So now we can hop in here and let's see ice cream. Ooh, I don't hate it. I don't know if it'll work for this particular design, but we, we might try it. Can we try it? Maybe we'll try it. Ice cream. And we have our standard and our slant. Probably standard. I love ice cream too. Ice cream is great. I need to buy some ice cream. All right, so we have our word donuts looking pretty good. I might want to increase the character spacing just a little bit. So we have some room for the actual donut itself. And now, like we were talking about earlier, we may want to use one of these donuts as the O. Now, the way this is laid out, Probably the only logical donut to use is this one in, I was going to say the center, but there really is no center of four of them. But this one down here, right? Because if I use the one at the top, which definitely matches color-wise, then we kind of lose the donuts down at the bottom. And if I use the one at the bottom, we lose the ones at the top. And this pink one kind of covers up on the left, right? So I'm going to make this nice and large. Position it somewhere in this area here. Now I could kind of try to cover up that O back there, or I could just double click in here, delete the O, and then increase the spacing like that, right? There we go. So now we're getting some. So there's the ice cream typeface, and let's go back to the Cubano typeface and see what that looks like. So both of them definitely have some advantages. I don't know, which one do you all like? So here's the Cubano typeface, and then we have our ice cream typeface. Hmm, I don't know. I like both of them. Now, one more thing I want to do, and this is obviously completely optional, but I've been kind of really big into textures, and if you notice on the example that I posted right over here, there's a little bit of a texture in the background. It also covers up the text, which gives it you know, a little bit of a papery feel. So if I hop over to, actually, let me drag out a rectangle. Hop over to Finder. I do have some paper textures, also licensed from Adobe Stock. And this one over here, we might try a few of them. Whoa, where did my, whoa, that was weird. Um, might try a few of them, but I'm going to drag this directly onto this rectangle. And then I'm going to experiment with some blend modes. Soft light, interesting, but because we have some lighter elements in the background, it kind of overblows it a little bit. So something like multiply with maybe a decreased opacity to somewhere around maybe 50 or 60% could work quite well, right? 
let's see. So Cubano, ice cream, Cubano, ice cream, but for this, oh, okay. So Philip says, I like ice cream, but for this Cubano. Okay, so it looks like Cubano is probably winning. Three to three to one, maybe? All right, let's go to Cubano. It's nice and large again. There we go. So we have donuts. And I'm thinking, you know, if we're doing, if we're going to be writing National Donut Day, we probably don't want donuts, plural, right? Um, but maybe we won't write National Donut Day. Maybe that will save that for the picture. So we'll just keep it at donuts. And then we have, we probably don't want the donuts to be affected by the texture. So I'm going to make sure to make, to put the texture below the donut. So we have the donuts nice and clean at the top here. And there we go. Perfect. We're getting all right, now for this example, because we're dealing with a landing page for maybe a website, we may want to add, we may want to add a few additional elements, things like um, navigation links at the top, right? So right up here, we may want to add things like menu or our mission, location, maybe potentially to start an order, things like that, right? So if I go ahead and type out the menu, for example, that's obviously way too large. And we'll probably want to drop this down to maybe 32. We'll see what 32 looks like. We may have to drop it even more depending on how many links we're going to have up there. And, you know, I'm looking at, usually I try to avoid using heavier or display typefaces for navigation links. But considering we're only going to have, <coughs> excuse me, considering we're only going to have maybe three or four up there, we might be able to get away with it. So let's go ahead and place this text layer into a group, Command and Control G. And within the Properties Inspector, I'm going to turn a stack on. I'm going to duplicate and duplicate, and we'll start with three. We'll see what that looks like. Our mission and maybe locations. And of course, we're definitely going to want to increase the padding in between. I'm also going to drag out some guides so I can line things up really nicely. That could potentially work. I don't, I think it might be a little bit too large to the text layers, right? Possibly. Obviously, you don't want to go too small. Like if you do 12, that's way too small. But something like maybe either 28 or 24 could potentially work. Kind of has like a movie poster kind of vibe to this. It's interesting. Um, I think it could work. All right. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And maybe down at the bottom, we might want a call to action. Because a landing page like this, it looks nice, but there, at the moment, there's really no call to action. So we may want a simple button to maybe start your order or explore the menu or something to that effect, right? So let's add a button down here. And then maybe we'll round out the corners just a little bit, maybe about 16. And then on the inside, we might want start your order. There go 23. Much better. Now I'm going to make sure that I have both of these objects inside of a group. I'm going to call that button. We can also create a component if we're going to be using this on multiple pages. At the moment, we won't be, but I'm going to create a component anyway because you never know, right? And then I'm going to also turn padding on. That way I can define the padding of this button within my properties inspector. Or if I decide to change the label itself, it automatically resizes, which is Fantastic. All right, so we have our start your order button looking pretty good. Probably needs some sort of text that goes above it or below it or somewhere, right? So if I go ahead and grab my text tool, maybe I'll draw out and define a width. And then we'll type out something like
There we go. Now, obviously we have a few problems, right? The text is blue. Not going to work against a blue background, so we're going to switch it over to white. And it's still set to the Cubano typeface, which, because we're going to be making this text probably a little bit smaller now, it's probably a little bit difficult to see, right? So, it's also a little bit overdone. So I'm thinking something like maybe Avenir Next is a pretty simple typeface. It's got some nice weights to it, so we can bump it up to semi-bold or bold or something like that, right? Maybe bold might be a bit too much, so maybe demi-bold. And then maybe we can do two or three lines, and we now have our call to action. Might be a little bit too small still. Maybe I'll increase the line height a little bit. And the position of this is always a challenge, right? Especially on a landing page like this, do you want to put it over to the left here? Do you want to move it kind of over to the right? I'm thinking probably over to the right, just so it doesn't get too cluttered with the donuts on the side. It also will allow this, the page to responsively resize. You have to think about that as you're designing a landing page like this. If you were to have this kind of right over here, and then the page were to resize in a browser, this might overlap depending on how it's coded, right? So if you have it over to the right, then you have a little bit of breathing room beside it to the left so that it can resize until a break point where things start to rearrange, right? So I think this could potentially work. Something like that. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it'll work, right? And it's making us all hungry. All right. Landing page is looking pretty good. Now we might want to start adapting. Oliver is saying perhaps center align the text above the CTA, possibly. Um, the tricky thing with this, and it's not terrible, right? The tricky thing with this is when it's not centered on a page, it looks a little bit unbalanced, right? So I would prefer it if it would be like right about here. I know we have to rearrange the donuts a little bit, but yeah, it looks a little bit, un even though I move it over here, it looks a little bit unbalanced when the text is centered, but it's not centered in the page, right? Another option we can potentially do is just move all of this stuff over, oops, all of it over to this side. Hmm, kind of gets lost over there. I don't know, we'll see. But I do want to move on and maybe start adapting this for mobile. So if I go ahead and press A to grab my artboard tool, I can choose, let's say, the iPhone 13 12 Pro Max artboard. And of course, it's not going to be as easy as just grabbing these elements and popping them on because some of them just won't fit. We're not going to be able to put the word donuts across the artboard on a mobile device. Just not going to happen. So you have to really think about what does that experience look like for mobile versus desktop, right? We can still have a very similar background. So if we click on the artboard of the desktop version, copy it, hop over here, right click, and then paste appearance, we're definitely going to have to adjust the gradient, right? And we can probably still also have the texture in the background and also the donuts. So if I maybe grab my rectangle tool, copy the texture, and then paste the appearance, right? We now have a nice texture back there. Again, very much optional. Some people don't like these textures in the background. It may not be necessary. And then we can grab our donuts, copy. Richard's asking, is that a preset artboard or did you create it? It is a preset. So if you press the A key on your keyboard, uh, you'll be able to get all these different presets that are on the right-hand side. And all of these come with XD as well, which is great. I'm gonna duplicate the donuts over. And we're likely going to have to make them a little bit smaller. So we have to start thinking, where are we going to place elements on this particular design, right? So we're probably going to want some buttons at the bottom, maybe to start your order and then find locations. Because the mobile version, you're probably going to be using the location finder a lot more than on the desktop version because you're on the go, you're looking for donuts, you want to quickly find a location, right? So we can go ahead and... You know what, maybe let's just grab this button over here. So there's start your order. And then we might want one more button down below. Now we might want 
a secondary button, not just a primary button. So if we right click and then press edit main component, we'll be taken to our main component and we can go ahead and create a new state. And this will be called outlined. And then for this one, I'm simply going to turn off the fill, add a border, bump up the size, and then type out something like find locations. Now we're going to run into a problem. So if I hop back over here, right, we have start your order, and then I'm going to duplicate it down and then switch it over to outline. Mm -mm. Not going to work, right? Because we had padding turned on on the main component on that button, it automatically resized the background like I was showing earlier. In some situations, that will work great. But for mobile designs, probably not in this situation, right? You likely want the buttons to be the exact same size. So we could go ahead and just stretch it out, um, adjust the padding down at the bottom here, right? But preferably, we would probably just remove the padding from the main component or create components that are specific for our mobile experience, right? So we can definitely do that as well. So I'm going to turn padding off. And now we have buttons that are the same size, which is great. Perfect. Much better. All right, so we have our mobile screen. Start your order, find locations. Looks pretty good. That could potentially work. All right. And then what we might want to do is maybe when start your order is pressed, and this could say start your order or explore menu or whatever it might be, we might want to be taken into the app where we can actually start browsing some of the items. Now, I'm going to create one more artboard. Now, even though on this screen here, the ones with, you know, the donuts and start your order and find location, we're, we've been using this blue background with the texture throughout this screen and our desktop screen. For something like a menu, you probably want to avoid that because there can be a lot of information on this menu screen. May not be necessary, right? So I would say keep it very simple, um, you know, white or add a little bit of blue in there if you want, blue and gray, just to add a touch of color. It's very subtle. There's white and then there's the bluish gray, but it will make a difference, especially if you start adding cards on top of it with a lighter background. Right. All right. So at the top, let me actually just type out menu. We may want to kick it off with something like the word menu, right? Let me drag out some guides to about, let's say 24 and 24. Something like that. And then I can grab my text tool and type out menu. For the color, let's go for a nice dark color with a little bit of blue in there. And then I'm going to place it right in this area here. And I say this a lot, but I'll remind all of you if you're designing for an iPhone or some other phones that have notches at the top, it's there. So you definitely want to make sure not to place anything in this area here. It's about 56 pixels from the top. It's something like this that you kind of want to avoid, right? So I'm going to place menu right about there. And then right down below, we may want maybe a search box. You might have a specific donut in mind and you might want to very quickly search. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe round out the corners just a little bit to about eight. And let's set a color. Maybe a little bit darker blue with a little bit of gray in it. We don't want to go too crazy with it. I mean, definitely that accessibility wise, that will not pass. But the elements that we're going to place inside of this search box will be nice and dark. So we'll be able to see them quite nicely. So we need probably a magnify glass and also some text to let users know what exactly this box is for. Now, if I hop over to my plugins down here at the bottom, I do have the icons for design plugin installed. So I'll type out something like search and the feather icon is quite nice. Make it a little bit smaller. This one is border based. So I'm gonna just drop the border to about two. Maybe I'll use this color up here. And as I'm going through this process, I should definitely be adding these colors to my character styles or to my document assets so I can very easily use them. And then search box is another area you probably don't want to use 
a heavier or you know more display type base like Cubano. So we're gonna probably switch back over to Avenir next again, and maybe we'll bump up the weight a little bit to about semi-bold. Mustafa has to dash. Uh, thanks for joining in, Mustafa, and have a great weekend. Maybe even bold, just so it really stands out. It's not too bad. It could work. Awesome. I think it could work. 12 for the size. You might be able to get away with 14. That could work. All right, so we have our search looking pretty good. And then down below, we may want to kick off with maybe a featured section. So if I duplicate this downwards, maybe I'll place it, I don't know, about 40. want a little bit of room up there. 48, is that too much? Possible. Make sure to left align it. About featured. And because menu is the main category or the, you know, the, the main label for this entire page and then featured is a label for this particular section, we may want to differentiate that a little bit by allowing menu to be a little bit larger and then featured to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to drop this down to about 24 and I may even consider bumping this up to about, let's say 32. Philip is asking, why do mo all of... Why do almost all of your colors have a bit of blue in it? Is it just personal preference or is it a design guideline or something? That's a very good question. Uh, for the most part, actually probably the whole part, it's personal preference. Let me duplicate this, right? So this is gray and this is black, right? I mean, many people, honestly, many people probably won't even be able to tell the difference. Um, but I, I, I've personally found and other designers have found adding a little bit of blue and sometimes it could differ based on your design itself. If you're working on a landing page like this, right? And maybe you have more of a red background, right? Which is quite interesting, red or pink, right? You might use a little bit of pink or red in your text, right? But I've personally found that just adding a little bit of blue in there it kind of softens out the text just a little bit. You know, there's gray in the middle. This is pure gray, right? And then there's pure black over here to the right. And then we have our little bit of blue. Again, many people probably won't notice a difference. I don't know. I just find it, it kind of softens things out a little bit. Um, but again, personal, it, very rarely you'll find this in a design guideline, unless it's part of a design system that maybe your company or your team has produced, right? But, you know, Apple or Google or whatever, they might not have a, a design guideline that says to add a little bit of blue in it, right? Just a personal thing, usually. All right. So, by bars, the first time watching live, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy my little uh, spiel about adding blue to things. Sometimes I feel like Bob, Ra Bob Rass. Bob Ross, just add a little bit of blue in there. Just a little bit. And it works for grays, too. So, if you have a text... Let me actually change the background for a second. So if you have text like this, you know, here's pure white. Here is gray. And a little bit of blue. And sometimes you have to like kind of Finesse it to get the right amount of blue. But you can kind of see, right? Pure white is very strong and in your face. Gray is a little bit muted. And this is kind of a nice balance in between. A little bit of blue just softens things out. Of course, it depends on what you need, right? Sometimes you're going to need that very strong contrast where you're going to need dark and then light. So in this case, you know, this is going to work. The gray, I try to stay away from grays unless I really need to. Um, I just find that they kind of make things a little bit muted or muddy sometimes. So just adding that touch of blue or whatever color your primary color is kind of works sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. All right, Oliver is laughing at Bob Ross. Uh, as long as you don't say goodbye with the art palette and the pinky finger, I'll, maybe one day I will. Maybe one day. <laughs> Wade says, add a touch of... Thou blue to your type pauper ass. Oh boy. 
I'm not going to live that one down. All right. So we've done basically nothing in the last 10 minutes. All right. So we have our featured section and now we want our, whoops, we might want to kick off with maybe one of the featured donuts, right? And there's a lot of different ways we can go about creating something like this. So let's go ahead and start creating a box. And we're just going to block things out for now. The one area I do use grays on is when I'm kind of blocking things out and just figuring out where things go. Grays work really well because there's lots of grays, right? And then some of the other colors like this, just a, a strange looking. So I just try, try to stay with kind of the grays for blocking things out. Now, maybe over top of this, kind of like in a stylized way, we might want a donut that kind of floats in this area here. And then over to the right, we'll have more information about that donut, and then we'll be able to maybe add some to the cart. Now, if I hop over to Finder, I do have some more images of donuts. I have this one here, also from Adobe Stock. We might be able to extract some of these for this particular example, or probably wouldn't recommend it for a real world application. We could use maybe some vector graphics like this or like this one here. Now, if you're a company and you're a restaurant selling actual donuts, probably stay away from this. Try to show your actual donuts, things that people will be actually eating, right? But, you know, this could work. And because um, Illustrator files open great in Adobe XD, there it is. There's our donut, right? So I can copy this to my clipboard, pop it over here. Pretty good size too. And it's all vector based, so I can make it nice and large or nice and small or whatever I need to. Round up the corner up at the top there. Actually, you know what? Let's round out the corners completely. Let's go about, not completely, but about 16. And then for the styling of this particular box, there are a few ways we can go. We can either have, you know, a similar color like this. Right? And then we can place maybe some white text on top of it. Or we can do something, and this is, you gotta be careful with this, right? You gotta do something like, and Syed is saying, I'm from Afghanistan, it's my first online masterclass with you. Thanks for joining, I appreciate it. And then, so underneath this white box, which, again, you gotta be careful because it's a white box and a white background, we can put a little bit of a drop shadow. Maybe I'll bump this down to about 16. And then maybe I'll try 32. And then I'm going to add a little bit of color. To, and this goes back to the co whole color thing. Just kind of softens things out a little bit, right? So you have blue. A little bit of blue in the drop shadow. If you were to go black, it just kind of looks... I don't know. looks a little bit dirty for the shadow. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. But if you just add a little bit of blue in there, it still kind of accomplishes the same thing. Where it's separating that box from the background. And you definitely want to make sure that the blur amount is quite high. If you were to do something like this, it just looks a bit strange, right? So that something like that could potentially work, right? Bump it down a little bit more. Maybe drop the opacity a touch. And if you're kind of if you're going in this direction where you have a very light box against a light background, you definitely, definitely want to make sure that the content inside of it is very bold and easy to read because this this white on white not going to pass accessibility it's just not right so keep those things in mind i would also maybe even add a border very subtle border possibly right just to kind of add a little bit more separation but what we might want to do now is maybe type out maybe this will be called blueberry swirl and i'll use the same color here and size-wise, that's not too bad. I think I might run with that. And then underneath it, we might want a little bit of a description of what this particular donut is. Um, so let's say frosted. Swirl of vanilla icing, right? And then because this is more of a description, we're definitely going to want to change this to our typeface that we're using Avenir next, and I'm going to probably drop the size a little bit, maybe bump up the weight a touch to about semi-bold. Definitely want to bump up the color. Definitely cannot see that very well. I think this is a little bit too large still. Let's bump it down. Let's try 14. All right. 
getting there. And then right underneath this, we may want to introduce the ability to add maybe some donuts very quickly to the cart. You know, you, of course, we could have just a card like this and then they tap on the card and they go to a different screen. And there might be that option too. But if they know exactly what they want, they might want, you know, a very quick way of adding. So if I grab, let's say, a rectangle, I'll round this out completely. Something like that. Maybe we'll change this to a nice blue, possibly. And we're going to want a color that's going to be consistent throughout all of the cards. So we, you know, my first thought was maybe we can match it to this donut, right? Or maybe a darker color or something like that. But then the next card might have a different colored donut. So are we going to change up this kind of widget every single time? Probably not, right? So we want something nice and actionable that's, you know, in this range here. And then inside, we might want, let me make this a little bit larger. This over here is going to indicate how many donuts you currently have in your cart or you have selected, right? So on the inside of this, we might want to put, let's start with two actually. Use the nice blue. Maybe we'll bump this up in weight a little bit to about two or bold, I should say. And then over to the left and the right, we might want the minus and plus button. Now, that can be very easily, easily being, that can easily be done using the line tool. Maybe I'll round out those caps. And then if I duplicate this over, I can duplicate one more time, command and control D, and then rotate it by 90 degrees. And now we have a plus button. And it's a little bit too cramped, so I'm going to probably, let's start grouping some of these elements. Add, this will be minus, or I guess subtract. And then I'm going to group this, count, and then I'm going to group the entire thing. Quantity. And make it a little bit responsive resize does its thing quite well. But I might want to make sure that these are kind of more centered. That could potentially work. I think this might be a little bit too bold. Let's try demi-bold. Yeah. Might also be a little bit too large, too. Possibly. There we go. I think that's working. Now, what we can also do is we can actually create a component from this and wire it up. We could get a little bit fancy with masks and you know fun things like that, or we can just keep it very simple, right? So if I go ahead and create a component, Command and Control K on my keyboard, what I can do now is create a new state. So we're on, we're on number two, right? Quantity number two. So we can create one more. We can either start at number one or just kind of start in the middle if we wanted to. I'm gonna create a new state and maybe this will be one. I'll change that to one. Now, when you're on the first state, or you want, we're in your, when you're on the state that has one for the quantity, usually you can't go down to zero. You, sometimes, sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. Um, depends if you already have things in your cart. Then, you, if you do that, then it removes from your cart. Whole other story. But I can just drop the opacity of the minus so that users know. Missy says I'm hungry for donuts now. Me too. Maybe I'll order some donuts later. Um, so I want to drop the opacity a little bit so that users know that they cannot subtract from one, right? And then I'm going to create another state. This will be maybe three. And then maybe we'll just do one more. And this will be four. And now that those are done, what we want to do is want to make sure that we can wire all of these up. So inside of prototype mode, we're gonna make sure to select the elements that are gonna allow us to navigate to the other states. So from two, if we go back to one, now I'm gonna to get to this in just a moment, but uh, if we go ahead and click on that handle to the left, I'm gonna choose state number one, simple transition with no animation is fine. And then from here, we're gonna to go to state number three. And then from three, we can go to four, and then back to this with our default state, and then from four, we can go back 
to three. Now, of course, if we did have additional states, we can use the plus button to go back or to go to the next one as well. But now we can go press play and we can now interact with our element, right? Well, I forgot to go from one to two. Should definitely do that. But I did, but I guess I did. I didn't. There we go. Now, I kind of mentioned it, but I also didn't touch on it too much. But what you might notice is as I move my cursor to this minus button, I have to really make sure that I'm over top of the actual element itself, that line, for it to actually work, right? So if I'm just a little bit below, not going to work, right? So for things like that, what I would definitely recommend is diving into the main component and just adding like a little hotspot behind it. And you don't need to see the hotspot. It just needs to be there. So you can drop the opacity all the way down to zero, just like that. And make sure that it doesn't have to be, but just to help group these two elements, call this minus. And now if I go to all the other states, that hotspot is there because I added it to the default state on the main component. Now I've already done the job of wiring things up. So I would have to go through and, you know, move the wire to that hotspot or the overall group. Or I'm just trying to play it in my head. If you had, I wonder if that would work. You know what? Let's try that because I don't know if that will work or not. I don't want to spew something out that's not going to work. So what I was thinking, let me actually just go back before we wired all this stuff up. Undo all of this. We're experimenting live on air. This is fun. All right, so what I was thinking is if I had minus inside of a group, this little tiny line inside of a group, right? I should let me add that to the main, the default state. Minus. And then I used this to go, I selected the group, right? rather than the actual line itself. Whoop. Select the group, wire that up to state number one, right? So we were gonna run into the same problem now where it's very difficult to actually click on anything. Did that work? State number one, yeah. What did I do? It is wired up, right? It is state number one, transition. Anyways, what I was thinking is, what if we go into the group now from the default state and then add that hotspot in here? Will that wire automatically attach itself to the overall group? I feel like it would, but I just want to make sure. It does. So now we have a much bigger hotspot, right? Did you see that? Right, so we have a much bigger hotspot now. All right. Very good. Just wanted to make sure before I told you all some wrong information, but my thoughts were correct. Alrighty, so we have our first card looking pretty good. I'm gonna make sure to group all of this information and I'll call this card. And we may want, I was gonna say maybe we have one more going down the artboard, but for the sake of time, let's add one more section, which might be maybe new, right? new donuts and then this one will be a little bit different so we might want something like this we can probably copy the same style from this container so if i copy to my clipboard and then paste appearance just like that we have something very similar which again i'm still not loving the white on the, on the lighter background but we'll revisit that and then on the inside we can kind of continue that same idea of that donut kind of breaking the bounds of our box so we have a few here that we can potentially use, you know, this pink one. We can do something like that, maybe. Or I do have another document with donuts that are kind of more straight on. So some of these might potentially work, or these ones over here. These ones are kind of fun, but let's run with this for now. And then right below, we might want to indicate what this donut is called. Now in the chat, if you're still here, let me know, what, what should this donut be called? I'm just gonna call it for now, 
sprinkle attack. But there's no sprinkles, right? That, that wouldn't even work. Um, cherry delight. Did I spell that right? Delight. Okay, there we go. Something like that. And because this title is quite a bit smaller than something like this one up here, we're probably not going to want to go to the Cubano typeface. So we're going to stick with Avenir next. Maybe we'll bold it just a little bit. Or we can potentially set it to heavy. It might be a little bit too much, but we'll see what that looks like. Maybe this will be $1.25 each. It's probably a bit expensive for donuts, but we're going to run with it. And then we're going to want a similar, um, you know, picker that we had before. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. Now we might have to, actually, maybe not. I was going to say we might have to redesign it for this smaller. No, that could work. That could potentially work. It's always nice when that happens. All right. Looking pretty good. And now what we can do is we can actually group this entire card. And then we can add a few more extending off the artboard. So we can set up a scroll group, for example, right? So if I go ahead and either use a repeat grid or a stack, in this case, we're gonna use a stack. So I'm gonna place this to a larger group and call this new. And then I'm gonna turn a stack on within the properties inspector, did define it as horizontal and then duplicate, 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 right? So we have a few additional ones going across. And then with the overall group selected, over back within the properties inspector, I can enable a scroll group. Horizontal, vertical, or horizontal and vertical. In this case, we want horizontal. And I'm going to make sure that the bounds are extended all the way to the end of the artboard. And now if I press play, we can very easily just scroll and see all the lovely donuts that are part of this particular card, right? Which is great. Maybe I can maybe just swap out one of them very quickly, just so we don't have too much repetition going on. There we go. This one looks like it's probably going to be a little bit more price. All right. Now we have about th two or three minutes left. This is looking pretty good, but I want to very quickly try to create a donut. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this in three minutes, but we're going to try. Let's see what we can do in three minutes. It's going to be fun, right? All right. So the donut, obviously it has the actual dough, right? And it has a hole in the middle. So we're going to drop that down and we're going to subtract it using our Boolean options. Boop. There we go. Now we have a bit of a donut, right? Now on top of it, we need some sort of icing, right? We have this, this fancy icing that usually goes around donuts that's a little bit wavy. Here's an interesting idea. We can use our polygon tool, make that a little bit larger. I'm thinking polygon, what, what are we doing? What exactly are we doing with a polygon tool? Well, we can use, let's say, maybe we'll do like 18 sides. Now that looks ridiculous, right? We can maybe round out the sides a little bit. Now it looks like a square, right? But we can use our star radius. Oh, look at that. And now we have something that looks almost like icing. And we experiment a little bit with some of these values till we get something that looks interesting. But this also should have a hole in the center, right? Because when you're putting icing on a, a donut and there's a hole in the donut, it usually kind of goes on in. So what we can do is we can duplicate this, shrink this down. We're probably gonna wanna reduce the amount of sides on this particular element. Something like that. And then we can use this to subtract from our icing. Boop, just like that. And what's really nice is all of this is non-destructive. So I can dive into this Boolean object and just kind of tweak it as I need to. Sometimes a bit difficult to select, right? But we have something like that. We can rotate a little bit. And now we have some icing. And then we can start, definitely won't have time for this, but we can start adding some, you know, layer styles. Add some 
color to this. Maybe make this a little bit, maybe we'll add a little bit of a radial gradient. So we have in the center, a little bit of a pink and on the edges, a little bit of darker pink, right? Then you can add a bit of a shadow on the inside or a highlight. Right, something like that. Or you can add a shadow on the bottom. A lot of different things. Obviously, this doesn't look that great, but just to kind of give you an idea of what I was getting to towards, something like this, right? And this is still far from complete, but icing, donut, sprinkles, all that fun stuff, right? That's going to wrap things up for me for, for now. I'll be back a little bit later with the daily or the XD challenge. But Kyle T. Webster is coming up in just a few moments with his illustration masterclass. Always a good time. And I will see you all next time. Thanks, everyone.